So Inside the Pocket is a an aggregation platform uh, for any brand looking to use gaming or games as a mechanic to attract, convert, and retain customers. Uh, there may be other geographies that are maybe more mature, for instance. Um, we we are, oh, beg pardon. Siri didn't like that. We're, we're not beholden or wedded to any one particular product type. Um, we do indeed let the end consumer choose for us, it, and uh, we're, we're, we're totally agnostic to the question in many, in many respects. Because your background, you know, it's actually an honor to meet you, because I was always a, a fan of what you guys were doing in your past life with the Jaguars uh, as you looked at international market. As, Please. as important. Are you responsible for the Jaguars playing in London every year? <laughs> Hello, Hussein. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself and what In the Pocket is all about. Uh, well, thank you for the opportunity, first of all. Uh, it's, it's an honor to be here. Um, so Inside the Pocket is a an aggregation platform uh, for any brand looking to use gaming or games as a mechanic to attract, convert, and retain customers. Uh, our USP is that we have signed up 20 of the top providers and, and content providers in the space. And so through a single integration that takes about three weeks, you can open up an entire sort of marketplace and world of free-to-play uh, and indeed pay-to-play games depending on on the jurisdiction. Uh, um, you know, we don't have a betting license, so we say that, uh, you know, anything that doesn't require a betting license, we'll put on the platform. It be that games, be that articles, videos, blogs, etc. Uh, so complementary to that business, we have a daily fantasy business that is a direct-to-consumer business uh, that's been live in India for a little bit more than a year uh, under the brand of Wonder Winds. And uh, we, we feel like there's a lot of headroom in the daily fantasy space, uh, particularly in the emerging markets. Our, our focus isn't necessarily North America, but uh, in emerging markets, whether that's Africa, uh, Latin America, or, or CIS countries, um, you know, we think that there's a, there's a lot of opportunity in the DFS space, and um, we're hoping to hoping to carve our little space in there. Yeah. So it's a interesting, like uh, all these as you mentioned, emerging markets, and they all have their own um, you know, culture, obviously, and games uh, that attract them, and maybe you know t- types of bets are you know, not you know sports bets, but but types of uh, you know, w- wagers they'd be interested sure. in. Like, h- how do you go about um, uh, kind of adding like precision to like in Africa or in India or you know, yeah. even Latin America? Yeah. yeah, no, that's a great question. So, for us, we're a white label proposition, right? So, in many respects, we are client led. Uh, you know, the client will have a view to that question. Mm-hmm. Uh, alternatively, we also are very sort of data focused. We'll let the data decide. Uh, what does and doesn't work. One of the benefits of taking a platform approach for uh, whether it's an operator or a media company, a brand of any sort, uh, is the network data that we're able to provide. So, you know, because of our uh, sort of single integration, because everything flows into one data warehouse, you're able to see competitive products side by side. And so, you know, from our perspective, um, hopefully from our client's perspective, we let the end consumer choose what product is going to win. So you're you're 100 percent correct. There may be certain geographies where a pick six for a huge jackpot uh, makes a lot of sense. Uh there may be other geographies that are maybe more mature, for instance. Um yeah. Yeah. Where, oh, beg your pardon. Siri didn't like that. Uh, huh. <laughs> there may be other geographies where um, you know, a, a scratch card or uh a, a a digital version of something that they're quite quite used to on, in a physical context, might be a more appropriate uh, activation measure, uh, and then you know, indeed, there are going to be different uh, different brands are going to want different things, right? So there may be in the hospitality sector uh, one form of activation or one form of of engagement uh, that is very different to what a, a betting operator may want. In in each of those geographies each of those company types is going to have a different level of tolerance and and uh different level of 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 interest 
in the products that are out there, whether it's ours or 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 somebody else's a third party product. So, you know, we're we're not beholden or wedded to any one particular product type. Um, we do indeed let the end consumer choose for us, and uh, we're 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 totally agnostic to the question in many in many respects. Yeah, yeah, uh, that that makes total sense. And uh, you know, uh, you know, being able to understand like all these different um, parts of the world and drilling down like into an Africa or into an India where that could also be uh, a, a, little, a little bit different by region, by the north of the country, the south of the country, or east or west. Yeah, no, that that's 100% correct. Obviously, look, uh, the Africa, by no, none of these places is a monolith, right? So, you know, right. Ghana is going to have a different uh, sort of set of needs than South Africa than it is than, than Nigeria. And, you know, Brazil... Is a, it's a great it's a great point you're making, right? In Brazil, the north and the south are in many respects very very different, um, and you know they have different cultural nuances. And and you know as as a company matures, as as we mature as a business, you know the ability to offer even demogra- different demographics within those um, with those geographies, I think, is 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 a real opportunity. Uh, whether that is precisely you know send this game to this person, which we can do now. Uh, or indeed recognize what type of person is coming on to the platform again, which we can do now and serve up a particular game type to them. Uh, um, might be might be pretty interesting uh, to to people, and, and it's certainly proving to be, uh, you know, something that 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 people are interested in having conversations around. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so so you're, you're letting your clients kind of drive their their. Um decisions on which games to promote or which games to pull back based on the data that you provide them. Right. Yeah. It, it does depend on the client in, in, in a lot of ways, right? There, there are going to be some clients who already have a view. Uh, and then there are other clients who have a view that, you know, we, we should be the experts in the space so that we should be making a recommendation. Sure. Uh, um, you know, I, I, I'm happy to, to happy to do either. Um, and, and the lead as, 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 as appropriate. Okay, got it. Um, and um, in in terms of the technology that's supporting all this, my assumption is if 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 you're already working with continent like like Africa, big countries like Brazil, India, and so forth, uh, you must have a you know a pretty significant kind of tech stack supporting all this to make sure that everything is running smoothly, efficiently, and most importantly, quickly. Uh, yeah, no, that, 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 uh, you're, you're right. That, that has been a huge focus for us. Um, you know, we, we re- literally went basically live bullets, uh, about 24, 48 hours before the world cup in Brazil. You can imagine, uh, you know, sort of how white knuckle that was. Um, and I have to say, I am extraordinarily proud of the team. I haven't read the line of code, so I can't take any credit for it whatsoever. Um, but I'm extraordinarily proud of the team in India and in Brazil, um, who are a big part in, in Latin America and, and, and India, who built our respective systems. Uh, there was not a second of downtime, and we were taking on Super Bowl-level traffic for two weeks straight. Um, and I was with literally not a second of downtime. I was so pleased with, with how things Performed and, and kudos to our uh, to our third party content providers. Um, you know, we have uh, a, a pretty deep relationship with with a group called iPools, um, and you know Matt Steer and his group were were phenomenal. And and look, you're this is, this is no this is no secret. You're, you're always as strong as your weakest link. And um, I have to say, I'm absolutely honored to have such a strong team behind us because. Uh, it could have been it could have been a real disaster, and and we flipped the lights on, and it went like gangbusters. I'm really really excited by by our tech stack. Yeah, very impressive. Yeah, you can be seen all by traffic. Yeah, go ahead, go. It's interesting you mentioned the World Cup um, because because your background, you know, it's actually an honor to meet you because I was always a, a fan of what you guys were doing in your past life with the Jaguars uh, as you looked at international markets. Uh, yeah, you can maybe touch on that a little bit about your background because I think it's fascinating. And I, and I thought what you yeah. did for the NFL as a team was really interesting. 
Um, and I was always a fan from the outside, but that's besides the point. What I was just thinking about was tent pole events, like the World Cup. Do you have a calendar where you look around Africa, India, cricket, all these sports and say, oh, we should be launching a game here. We should be doing this. You know, do you guys strategically look at the world for big tent pole events? Yeah. Uh, well, and also as, as important, are you responsible for the Jaguars playing in London every year? <laughs> uh, uh, I always thought that was an interesting move. I thought what you guys were doing was bad. <laughs> yeah, it's a side uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, another, that's another half hour. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about it next time. How you guys here? Yeah, I um. No, so I was very, very lucky to to have um, an incredibly forward thinking owner I worked for, and an even more forward thinking boss uh, who I started with in New York and ended with in in Florida, who um, were willing to take risks. Right? I mean, they're, they're, it, it's a it is not a those kind of decisions are not for the fate of art, and and they were really um, they were they were, they were bold in taking the decisions, and, and certainly I was honored to be a small part of of executing on them. Um, you know, on the question of ten pole events, yeah, I mean, obviously, um, you know, it would behoove us to be part of the conversation on some of these big events. I think for us, you know, we don't see ourselves necessarily as a games company. You know, we we make games, and I'm proud of the games that we have out there. But we we're we're a tech company, we're a platform, and we we help people acquire customers. So for us, the conversation really is around. Okay, well, the NFL season's about to start in a month and a half. Are you ready? Yeah, the, the super the, the the Super Bowl will be here before you know it. Are you ready? You know the the cricket World Cup is going to be around the corner before you know it. Are you ready? These kind of conversations, I think, are the ones that that we enjoy having because it allows people to say, okay, well, yeah, that that fair point. How are we, what are we going to do about that? Um, particularly in sectors that are sort of more ter- tertiary to um, it, to you know, obviously everybody in the NFL knows, everybody in the U.S. knows that that. Camps open up in in uh, fifteen days, uh, uh, but who's counting? Um, the <laughs> you know, but but the hospitality sector, right? Like they they're they're out selling hotel rooms. They're out trying to right. build you know their their P and L and make sure that their their reward systems are are delivering the way they should be. They're not necessarily it's wedding season. It's wedding season. That's exactly right. It's wedding season. Got to be. That, that's right. That's right. And so for us, you know, going out and sending ticklers saying. You know, you have a sport. You have a major sponsorship position in these in these different type of events. You know, let's help let's help think about how you can broaden the appeal and and get people to come back to your app or get people to come back to your rewards program outside of just booking a a room or booking a flight or booking a a, a reservation. How do we get people more more engaged on a regular basis on a more year round basis and really exploit the the rights that you have. Um, you know, having come from a background like the Jags, where I, I left just before uh, Trevor Lawrence was start was finding his sea legs, um, and so the year I left was the year I looked at Envy with uh, with the record they had, um, and so you know I, I don't I don't think I'm I'm being the least bit rude to to my prior employers, but there were some pretty lean years uh, in my time with the Jags, and I think everybody would admit that and. Having to having to engage fans and having to engage uh, the local community when you didn't necessarily tap the the product of the field to brag about, you really had to do a lot of things around the stadium and around uh, the experience in order to to draw people. And I was lucky enough to 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 lead that effort um, in, from the time I was in Jacksonville. And you know, it teaches you a lot. It teaches you the value of data. It teaches you the value of trying to understand your customer. It teaches you the value of trying to entertain a, entertain a customer and being a fan at all times, right? And that that's what I most enjoy is is the fact that I can still live out my my goofy fandom uh, in in this current business uh, in a way that you know um, I'm still I still feel pretty fortunate to be to be able to do. And, and you can it's great. I'm assuming apply some of those concepts that that you experienced during your Jaguars years to what you're doing today, like the attraction of the games, pulling people in, promoting personalization. Yeah, no, that, that that's right. And and look, I, I think the the fact that 
we were ridiculed when we first got there for the things that we tried. We, we were ridiculed for putting red zone uh, on in the stadium. We were ridiculed for having a fantasy zone. We were ridiculed for having swimming pools. We were ridiculed for <laughs> the, for the very for the for having a DJ during the game. Right. And then all I mean now, if you sort of fast forward, what ten years since since I was there when we first and, and Shad bought the team, you know. Those things are all par for the course in virtually every NFL and indeed many made the major new stadiums across the country. And you know, look, you you sort of again, you you have to you have to take risks. I think you have to acknowledge the fact that you have to have, particularly in a, in a in a geography like or a city like Jacksonville, where it's so ch- such a transient community. It's you know the military's biggest employer. People who come there aren't necessarily Jags fans. First and foremost, because because they're coming from other geographies, it's a relatively small group that is born and raised with Jacksonville Jaguars being the only team that they they know in that city. And so you have to provide different entertainment options for people. Got to give them people a reason to come. So whether that's a dog park that they have now put in there, or whether it was the swimming pools when when we first did the major renovation ten years ago, you know those are all things that 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 put a smile on people's faces from afar, but hopefully put a smile on people's faces when they're there as well. And for various, for two very different reasons. And I think from our perspective, coming back to inside the pocket, that also is a reason why aggregation works. You deliver different things to different people and you try to engage people in the way that they want to be engaged. And I think for a marketeer to tell their boss or indeed tell their audience that this is how you should engage with our product is a very dangerous thing to do uh, because I think you're leaving a lot of engagement on the table. And uh, unless and until you become a mind reader, um, you know, that, that's a risky proposition and, and, and I'm hopeful a product like ours mitigates a lot of that risk. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so in, in terms of uh, kind of the way you see down the line um, with um sports betting fantasy games uh like besides um going into the new regions uh what types of innovations uh whatever you can share uh dc coming within the next several years yeah you know look i i think the uh i I think what you're going to find is much more kind of structural changes in in the gaming space whether that's in maturing markets like like the U.S. or North America, or quite mature markets, whether that's Europe or or Australia, uh, and then markets that are going to come online, where people where where legislation around advertising is going to sharpen a lot more, um, and mm-hmm. and going to be sort of a lot more restrictive perhaps than it is today. And a product like ours that's focused on the free to play space and on the pay to play space, I think, will ultimately be advantaged by that right the, the ability to roll out to let's say all 50 states and not have to worry about advertising regulations or local whether a state is where gambling is permitted or not permitted in a particular state i think that flexibility will become really much more important than it is even today because you're going to see a constriction in advertising you're going to see a tightening i think the regulations around that so I think from a macro perspective, that's probably where you're going to see some pretty interesting structural movements and, and see, you know, there you're already seeing a lot of noise around. I can't believe we're seeing this much betting advertising. And that's not just true in the US, it's true in Canada, it's true in Australia, it's true over here. And sorry, I'm in London. Um so I think those that will be that will ultimately in the next two, two three, four years be a real area of discussion. From a technological perspective, I think you know, there, there's the knee-jerk reaction, of course, is to say you know, AI is going to lead the mm-hmm. lead. But it may. It, 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 I, of course, it, I think that's obviously here to stay. That's obviously here to revolutionize things. I, I don't think that that is um, going to be that. That's not going anywhere. And I, I, I sound like a fool for suggesting for anybody thinking that your any of your audience would think otherwise. Uh, I don't mean to be patronizing, but I think that will be a central element to where uh, gaming natural language conversation, natural language engagement with digital platforms will go. And I think what, as people and as products become more au fait with, with that, 
that will become quite interesting. And I think also down the line, as emerging markets, quote unquote, mature, data becomes less expensive, infrastructures become much more uh, robust, you're going to see a real sea change in where gamers are coming from. And when I say gamers, I mean gamers like people who engage in games like mine, not necessarily AAA titles. Yeah. Um, I think you're going to see a real shift in in where yeah. uh, where and how people are engaging in, in those game types. And you're going to start seeing a real proliferation of products really focused on those kind of markets because it just becomes that much cheaper uh, and that much more interesting for, for folks like that, uh, to, folks in those areas to play. Um, so I would say those are the two or three things that I'm looking at as we as we think about the business uh, in the next call it five years or so. Yeah, and that I mean, we're obviously going to ask the AI question because that's going to be a hot topic <laughs> of the day. So I'm glad you you address that in, in your response. You know, and it's still it's still new. You know, here at Data Art, you know, we're you know we're focused on you know, IT and custom solutions, and of course, you know, as soon as uh, AI popped, you know, we, we kind of rolled up our sleeves and started looking at it and, and how to best, um, you know, position it, you know, for, for our clients and, you know, there, there's still a little ways to go. And, and, uh, I mean, I agree that I wouldn't dive in there head first, see how it evolves, see it can help you because, you know, it can both probably, you know, help and, and hurt you as well, depending on how, uh, um, if you want to really let it loose, right. Uh, we might. Yeah, I mean, I guess the the central question for me on on that is what is it that you're letting loose, right? I mean, you're already starting to see. I think ChatGPT experienced its first contraction uh, in terms of of people going onto its site um, this this month. Uh, I just I think I just read that a few minutes ago, and you know, as the space evolves and as people get more mature, as companies get more mature with it. The question I think then becomes, what is it that you're actually deploying, and how do you verify its accuracy? How do you, uh, and and particularly when people's money is on the line, you know yeah. that that is that is a that's a huge huge question. A question. I mean, it, it's one thing to have ChatGPT proofread my emails. It's quite another for them to <laughs> make a stock recommendation or to to make a a betting recommendation. Those are two very very different things, and mm-hmm. and. I think we can need to. I think we need to be very, very careful about how we structure that. Uh, whatever, whoever the we is, uh, needs to be very careful about how that is structured and how that kind of uh, intelligence, artificial or otherwise, is deployed. That would be funny. If somebody sues uh, ChatGPT or OpenAI for giving them a bad, you know, suggestion. How to bet? <laughs> exactly. No, that's that's well, that's exactly how it'll happen. They did that. That are upset. You, you plan to like bro are making their chops as we speak. <laughs> yeah. There's no doubt about it. But security will be an issue for AI. And that's something that data are, you know, we've been in it for 10 years now and, you know, in the business. And that's, that's going to be key to, you know, there's going to be a lot of people popping up startups that really don't know what they're doing and could expose a lot of data through AI. I think that's true. Yes. Yeah, no doubt about it. I, I agree with yeah. that. And, you know, there's, um, what you don't want to do, I think, is certainly as a business who's who relies quite heavily on consumer data, um, and, or at least the understanding of it. You know, what what you don't want to do is have something like that make a blunder and then have regulators, you know, go to the other extreme and and really overreact um, or react to to something of an outlier that isn't necessarily the normal use case, and then you know, companies just get completely hamstrung um, in, in having to deal with these things. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a burgeoning topic, obviously, a really interesting one. I'm, I'm just as curious as anyone to see how this all plays out. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, this has been fantastic. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, I think we can keep talking exactly. to you for a long day. I'm, I'm other, yeah, at least uh, another couple of hours, but I know folks will be watching this probably have some work to do at some point but, uh, <laughs> we'll, we, 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 we'd love to have you on again uh, uh, go deep in the honor the jaguar stories will be super to get enough the jaguar you know, stories will be great yeah and you know i got one other question sports please. please you mentioned please. cricket yeah cricket in the u.s now i'm going to put you on the spot again sure if you're a sports guy you've launched stadiums teams cricket in the u.s launching 
<clears throat> a, are you going to be involved in any way? Is that a, and what do you think of it coming to the U.S. as far as uh, as far as a sport? You know, um, obviously the U.S. is a is a uh, incredible melting pot, right? I mean, there are pockets of very passionate cricket fans throughout the U.S. Whether that means it can sustain a full-on business model around it, uh, that I think it's early days. It's hard to tell. Um, right. You know, the there are even globally, right? Let's take just step outside of the U.S. for a second, and and you look at the countries where. Um, you know, there's a real passion for cricket. Um, it's, it's a limited number, right? They're, they're, they're right, probably right. 10 that are, that are super, super, super passionate about it. And, you know, maybe another 10 where it may be in the top seven, let's say of, of, of interest. Um, I don't think it would blip. It's not going to blip anytime soon in the U S that's for sure. Right. I think the big four, the big four and they're, 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 they're not going anywhere by any stretch of the imagination. It'll be interesting to see how how uh, the key and and with any business like that, of course, is how do you control your how do you control your expenses, and where's the revenue going to come from? You know uh, that those are the those are the stating to be obvious, but I think you know if you look at particularly lower lower level soccer, let's say in the U.S. setting aside the MLS, you know that's been that's been a, a challenge for places like that uh, or or for organizations like that. You know it, it that is a hard question to are hard needle to thread when you have such a big country uh, and you've got to play in, in various locations and, and um, it's not a really, really, really deep market that you're pen, trying to penetrate. Um, and so, you know, will we be involved? I think, I think we will be. Um, will it sustain? You know, um, I hope for their sake they does because it's a, it's an interesting sport. It could be a really. It, it, I hope that people will take the time to to understand it. Um, but you know, baseball is just now coming back from from some some right. years, and I think let let's see how let's how, let's see how the batter's clock goes and the pitcher's clock goes for for another year before we see uh, anybody checking out uh, a bunch of overs in a, in a cricket match. <laughs> Yeah, All right. excellent. Well, excellent. thank you for your time. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. Right. And, uh, look forward to chatting soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you.